We're all ready to go? Well, thank you for your attendance today for the announcement of the Australian teams um, and the captain of the Australian team. And Mal's going to do the honours of announcing both. But if you look to my left, I think you'll realise who the captain of the Australian team is. But I'll <laughs> hand it over to Mal to announce the Australian squad. Thanks, Chair. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here today. Uh, it's pretty exciting times. Obviously, it hasn't been a, a test match for, for three years. So, um, you know, this year with the World Cup, um, there are 13 deputants in this squad, uh, four players from last night's uh, grand final are playing, are in the squad. So I'll read the names in alphabetical order. Obviously, we've got uh, Teddy as the, as the captain uh, from the Bulldogs. Uh, we've got Josh Adokar uh, from the Parramatta Eels, uh, Regan Campbell-Gillard, also from the Bulldogs, Matt Burton from the Brisbane Broncos, Patrick Carrigan from the Manly Warringah Sea Eagles, the Daly Cherry Evans from the Penrith Panthers, Nathan Cleary, Sydney Roosters, Lindsay Collins from the North Queensland Cowboys, Reuben Cotter from the Sydney Roosters, Angus Crichton from the Gold Coast Titans, Tino Farsulamali from the South Sydney Rabbitohs, we've got Campbell Graham from the Melbourne Storm, Harry Grant from the North Queensland Cowboys, Valentine Holmes from the St George Illawarra Dragons, Ben Hunt from the Penrith Panthers, Liam Martin. From the South City Rabbitohs, Latrell Mitchell. From Melbourne Storm, Cameron Munster. South City Rabbitohs, Cameron Murray. And Cameron will be vice captain of the squad. From the North Queensland Cowboys, got Jeremiah Nanai. North Queensland Cowboys, Murray Tuilagi. Got James, obviously, as the captain. From the Manly Warringah Seagulls, Jake Travojevic. From Canberra Raiders, Jack Whiten. Also from the Penrith Panthers and Vice-Captain, Co-Vice-Captain, Isaiah Yeo. We also have three standby players. Um, to now, Stellan Edwards from the Penrith Panthers, Nico Hines from the Cronulla Southern Sharks and Damien Cook from the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Uh, we have those three on standby due to obviously injury concerns or uh, COVID, particularly over in, in the UK. Uh, I want to congratulate all those players, but also thank the selectors uh, Darren Lockyer and Laurie Daly for their cooperation over the last few weeks and of course the Chairman Peter Volandis for uh, being present as well. Thank you Peter. No, my pleasure. And that's it guys. Now, now James and Mal will take any questions you may have. Now what about that captainship decision? It's pretty easy, Reedy. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, he's our Premier player, uh, just got the player's player last night as well. Um, I thought he was the outstanding candidate. candidate. Uh, obviously captains his club and captains his state, so you know, congratulations to James, but it was a pretty easy one. James, what does it mean to you? Captain Australia, last World Cup. Yeah, yeah. Mal uh, called me and told me the other day, and um, yeah, it was just a real honour. I told my friends and family, and they were uh, a bit emotional and really proud, so yeah, it's just a, it's a huge honour, and I'm really excited to get over there and lead the boys and uh, you know, lead us to a, to a World Cup win. Now, Dylan, it was excellent last night. Yeah. Was standby player. Was it the temptation including the actual point? Uh, well, he's, he's had an exceptional year, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's a difficult situation when you're going to pick 24 players and um, our best player is a fullback, you know, James Tedesco. So, I mean, it is difficult. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, we had several conversations about this and, you know, unfortunately, in this instance, uh, Dylan misses out. Um, but we thought we'd pick some standby players as, in, um, as well because um, anything can happen through... It's a long tour. We're over there for hopefully seven weeks. And, um, yeah, he's just desperately unlucky. Because these options too. Yeah, we have. And, you know, with Luttrell and... You know, Cameron Munster finished the year at fullback with the Melbourne Storm. You know, Val Holmes can play fullback. Yeah, we've got some fantastic options at fullback and touch and wood that you know we don't have to use them and, and Teddy's there for the entire time. Just stay fit, yeah, just look after yourselves, obviously. Um, because I said it, it is a long time over there and um, you know, based on injuries, I remember in, in 17 we lost Jake Tavoyevich in the first game, so um, you know, anything can happen, so, you know, we'd, we'd love those guys to, to, you know, look after themselves and if called upon, they'd be in a fit state to come over and help out. Matt, running that too, because he's been up close, half back for his 
Um, I mean, Ben, yeah, Ben. Options. Well, I know Ben's had a fantastic series in Origin. Um, I think like 21 players in the 24 played Origin this year. And um, you know, I think he's an outstanding hooker, you know. And we've got Reuben Cotter, who is a, a backup hooker as well. You know, he come to the Cowboys club as a as a nine, and so so uh, his form this year has been extraordinary. He can play anywhere in the in the forward pack. So yeah, well, I think we've got that position pretty well covered. Does the, does the fact that Gully's not the vice captain suggest that? No, it doesn't. Nathan's got the running part. No, no, no. It's um, you know the. The captaincy and the vice captain um, was um, uh, was uh, considered through obviously through recommendations, but um, Peter and his his board um, felt that was the right way to go. And um, to have someone like Cameron, who's certainly a future captain down the road, and as Ayo, who's the captain of the of the premiership winning winning team, um, you know I think they've come with great you know, great caliber, and it will help you know Teddy out whilst whilst, whilst on tour. But we've got a lot of leadership in the team. You look, go through it, you know, DCE and Nathan and, you know, you go through all the different players. They're, they are leaders at their clubs anyway. Is that a, is that a view to the future, Cameron? And, um... Oh, look, we wanted a leadership team that can assist James. It's a long tour, it's seven weeks, and it's, it's more than just on the field. You need role models um, for the whole period you're there, and we think that three leadership group will provide that leadership uh, and assist James. Now, yeah, it's a good question. Um, but you know, Daly's the incumbent as well. You know, so he was there three years ago and had a really good season, uh, particularly Origin. You know, um, and Origin's considered the you know the biggest series of, of the year. So. Um, you know, we'll, we'll consider we'll consider all options. You know, that's what a tour is all about. You know, that everyone will have an opportunity to put their, you know, to to prove that they deserve to be at the back end of the tour. You know, so we've got three qualifying rounds. Um, we've got a quarter final into you know a really important game in the semi. So all players will get an opportunity to play and and put their hand up for a position in the team at the back end of the tour where when it does matter. You know, where we. We want to win the semi-finals and we want to win the, the, the finals. So, I mean, every player, and, and I've talked to, to, to Daly about it, and if you would have seen in the uh, PM's game last week where, you know, we put Daly at six uh, on the left side, and I thought he played really, really well. On the flip side to um, what Christian um, just said, given that the Kangaroos haven't played for so long, is it an advantage that maybe that Daly, you know, obviously hung Grant Wilkins and... Uh, Oh yeah, that's important. Uh, combination is important. Uh, experience is is more so important. Um, I would imagine you can ask Teddy. There's not many players in this squad have been on a long tour. You know, not many players have. You know, we've been played in the 2017 World Cup, but that was that was at home. You know, so this this time around we're away from home, uh, without families, by ourselves basically, um, in Manchester. So I mean, experience and you know combinations and friendships and all that sort of stuff they they come into play, and, you, and the balance of the squad has to be spot on too when you talk about positions, you know, and and players to play play a number of positions when you when you're away, and that just comes from you know experience that you know that I've obviously experienced over a long period of time, and I think. The balance of the squad is, is excellent. Yeah, I know Dylan can play right wing as well, but you know, it, it, you, know, you look at the you look at the squad. Um, our best player and our captain, his plays fullback. I go back to the, my original answer, you know, where and we've got you know several players in the squad that can actually play fullback if if need be. Yeah, well, Campbell's been around a while in the rep scene, you know, um, on the fringe of the, the Blues, and you know, I've, I've worked with Campbell before in the PMs. Um, I thought he's had a terrific year, you know, so great defensive centre, plays on the right side, um, plays tough. You know, he's been played with a, a crack rib for a number of weeks and, and played really, really well. So, you know, I think um, his time has come as a player. I feel that he's done enough um, in the centre position, and, you know, he certainly can fill that void for us, uh, right centre in the, in the Kangaroos. Now, how about how difficult the decision to leave Yeah, extremely difficult, you know, so um, we made a decision that, you know, obviously 
we want to go with two two hookers, and a, and a third one with the utility value, which is Reuben Cotter. So, you know, Damien um, has been a great servant uh, for the Kip Rabbitohs, and you know he's the incumbent. Um, but we felt that you know the two hookers we picked uh, just got a little bit better than him at the moment. What about Happy? Yeah, well, Appy's the same in the same situation. You know, it's obviously played in the Premiership winning side, but we felt that the Queensland hookers um, were, you know, best place to be in the squad. Can you give us a bit more insight the honour you've got the captain in the country? Yeah, I don't think there's a high, higher honour to, you know, to represent Australia and put that Australian jersey on and then being given the opportunity to, to captain and lead uh, the whole country. I don't think, I don't think there's a higher honour in, in the game, so... Um, yeah, when, I said when Mal gave me the call, I was, I was pretty uh, speechless and, and really proud of myself. And I know it's a, um, you know, it's a, it's a big task, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a great opportunity. As we've got plenty of leaders around me as well to, to help me out and to, to lead this team. So, um, yeah, I think running out as, as captain with the Australian jersey on is going to be a, a really proud moment for myself and my family. I, 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 like my answer before, it was very easy <laughs> to bring him up and say, listen, um, congratulations, you know, you're obviously going to play, you know, but we want you to be captain as well. And uh, he's very humble um, when he when he um, heard the news um, and thanked me other copious amounts of time. <laughs> but, you know, I, like I said before, he deserves the, the position. And um, as Teddy said, it's a it's an enviable position, you know, to, to captain your country is an extraordinary achievement. Um, it's honourable and it's a privilege, And um, but he's worked hard to get there and, um, yeah, he'll do a fantastic job on tour. Now, Alex, how excited are you seeing Josh O'Connor with the Green Yeah, no, excellent. Um, we know what he can bring, you know, we know he's how great a player he is and, and he's turned into a, into a great leader, at, you know, even though he's left the storm and, and played for the dogs, he's turned into a fantastic leader. And it was a pleasure to work with him last week with the, in the PM's game as well. And uh, he'll be an asset and he's looking forward to, you know, to touring and getting over there. And you know, he's an asset on off the field as well, as we all know. He's just a great person to be around. Now, you're in a unique position, given how long you've been to the team playing so many What's the most important thing that you want to see about what the Green Dog Jersey means and how do you touch it? Yeah, no, well, it's something that we'll have a conversation about um, you know, right from the beginning around, you know, how important is the, the green and gold jersey, the history of the, of the kangaroos and success um, that we've had over a long, long period of time. I think that's a really important conversation to have. We've got a strong value system that, you know, Teddy's been part of as well, um, which we'll discuss about moving forward because I think that that's a, the foundation to our success is around, you know, how much respect and how much we honour the jersey and, and the position that we're in. Now, do you feel a little bit of pressure to win? I know Australia is getting the favourites. There's always well, pressure to win it. You're always talking about New Zealand and the Pacific Nations, the yeah. uprising. It's still a bloody good team, Australia's yeah. respectable winner. Well, you judge, you judge the, the strength of our team by the people who's missed out. You know, so, like I said, we've only got only had 24 players to pick, you know. So, yeah, I mean, there's always pressure and there's always this expectation that you, know, you put a green gold jersey on, automatically you're going to win a tournament, you know. So, but you know, the international space has matured over the last few years, and you know the other teams are, are coming to get us. Um, New Zealand, you know, tremendous squad we just seen there today. So, um, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting for international game about where it's heading, and you know, we're obviously part of that. But we're not going there to lose. We're going there to win. Look, we want to promote the international game, um, so I don't have any problem with the player playing state of origin and then selecting the nation that he wants to play for. I think that's the way we're going to grow the international game. And Brad Fittler, the, the coach of the New South Wales team, has been very outspoken about the criteria. Um, we did look at it last year. Unfortunately, COVID interrupted that uh, investigation. We will continue to look at it because we want to have a, a very strong state of origin, but we also want to have a very strong international game. And, and I think that, um, look, there's a few tweaks we can do to the criteria where we can get both objectives um, satisfied. I'm sorry? Well, it, look, looking at um, if a player basically is born and bred in, Austra in Australia, he can still play State of Origin and select the, the team that he plays for internationally is one of the areas that we can look at. Um, 
and look, you've got the the tier A and T B, B nations at the moment. We have to look at that. Uh, but look, I don't want to preempt anything, but uh, we'll certainly be reviewing it and with with the assistance of the two state of origin coaches and Mal naturally, um, to make sure we've got the best model, especially considering the the growth of the the game in the Pacific and and to to an extent the where England's going, which are probably not not as strong as they've been in the past. <laughs> nah, nah. Caught up with Joey at the Dallium's. Um, I was I messaged him when it when he came out and said he was going to pick some miles. Obviously disappointed. I, I I thought he would be a big chance to make Australia, and he's had an awesome year, and I I love playing with him. So, um, but respect his decision. That's I had a good chat with him about it, and I, I love Joey. So. Um, yeah, I hope, hope he goes well. I know he's, he wants to play fullback, and I'm, I'm sure he'll do a great job. <laughs> yeah, well, the whole Samoa side is, is very strong now with his addition and the, the boys that have been chosen in that team. It's, um, it just makes the, the competition, the whole World Cup, um, a great spectacle. It's going to be uh, you know, a great competition for us to go against. So every team, as I said, the international game's growing. Every team's gotten a lot stronger. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be it's going to be a great World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, but again, we respect his decision, you know. So I mean, um, I've, I've said it all along. You know, I just want you know players to make up their mind, you know. And um, if you got a passion for playing for for your ancestral nation, I'm happy for you to do that. You know, I mean, and as Peter mentioned, we just got to just just create a bit more clarity around, you know. The, when they make a decision, so that you know, I think it's in, in all fairness, we we try to push the eligibility early, so that you know all teams could prepare the best they possibly can. Not just us who pick a team today, that all of a sudden we give everyone else, give the other squads, you know, a chance to pick the, the remainder. I just think that in all fairness, you know, we pick uh, you, you nominate early who you want to play for, and just get on with the job.